All right, first question we got from Elliot. Did you ever enjoy being a Christian? Uh, I did, yes, very much. I, as a kid, no, but who really does as a kid, you know, maybe like some fun little church activities or whatever. But when I, I really started getting really involved in church when I was 16, so and youth group stuff, you know, I played in the youth band and it was fun. And yeah, I really enjoyed being a Christian from 16 until after I got married. So like I got married at 22, almost 23. So I enjoyed being a Christian from like 16 to 24 ish. And not just because of playing music and that stuff. Like I really felt close to God. I prayed every day. I worshiped God. I went to church a lot and I loved being a Christian. I took a lot of pride in it. I brought my Bible to school, I brought my Bible to work. People thought I was crazy because I would pray and read my Bible in the break room. I loved being a Christian. But eventually, you know, I just didn't have a reason to be a Christian anymore. All right, here's the, the million dollar question, right? The one that a lot of people ask, not just me, but a lot of atheists or non believers or people who have deconstructed. And that is, what was the first main thing that made you question Christianity? Um, I used to go for a walk around the building at work. And there was a guy who would always stand out there and smoke cigarettes while I was walking around the building trying to lose my gut, which fluctuates in my, since I've been an adult, you know. But um, I would go walking around the building and one day for whatever reason he stopped me and was we were we got it talking about church and he asked me if I went and I said well not really anymore but I still believe and then he asked me why and I just kind of answered with a lot of the things that I had always had you know I just believed in the in the bible being the word of god and he told me that he used to be a preacher and the church that he went to discouraged him from wanting to go to college because they said that the college the professors were like doing the work of satan because they're promoting stuff that doesn't line up with the bible and stuff like that but eventually he went to, to college anyways and he took a religions i guess a religions 101 class or whatever learning about different religions of the world and he just learned about other stories that were very similar to that of Jesus that predated the story of Jesus, but there were like a lot of similarities. And then he got to talking about how people around the world, like different geographic locations believe different things. And it just sort of clicked in my head. I'm like 80 to 90% of people in the world believe the same thing that their parents do or, you know, the same thing that the people around them do. It's not always the case, of course, but it usually is. And so I got to thinking like if I were born somewhere else, I would believe something else. If my parents were Muslims instead of Christians, I would believe that way. And so it's like light bulb, you know, and I realized that that's why people believe and what made me right what made my religion right and all the other ones wrong because that's just how I was raised. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm right. And there are a couple of billion people on the planet who are not right. Just it sort of clicked for me there. Emilio has a question here. Hey man, I need advice. I'm dating a Christian girl who really takes religion seriously. And I'm an atheist. We sometimes argue about it. Any advice for it to work? If it's going to work, it's going to have to be neither one of you trying to convert the other. She can't try to convert you to Christianity and you can't try to like tell her to lose her faith. That's just bottom line. Because if, if either one of you have that agenda and you're not just trying to be in a relationship and love each other, then I just don't think it'll work. You have to think about, you know, if you're, planning on marrying somebody or having kids with them too down the road, then 
they're going to want to raise them a different way than you probably. So a lot of things to take into consideration, but you, it can work. You can date somebody who's religious. Just don't try to, con don't try to tell them that they're stupid or that what they believe is stupid or anything like that. And I'm no, uh, love coach by the way, <laughs> but uh, that would be my advice. Did my view on sex change after deconstruction? Well, you know, I deconstructed while I was still married. And, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's changed now. Um, I don't look at <laughs> premarital sex as a sin and all that shit like I used to, of course. It's just, if both adults are consenting, then cool. You know, unless, unless one of them's married or something to somebody else, then maybe not as cool. Tell that to my ex-wife. Um, my views on a lot of things have changed after deconstruction, though. You know, it's funny because the first, th first thing I deconstructed was my faith in Christianity. But these last couple of years, I've also deconstructed a lot of political thinking, a lot of, a lot of political beliefs, especially this year with everything going on. Really had to take a hard look at myself, do some introspection, you know. I voted for Trump in, in 2016. Now, some people might love that. And some people might say, what the fuck? But I voted for him. I, it was kind of a, I didn't ever love the guy. It was kind of like a lesser of two evils type of thing. But uh, yeah, so I voted for him in 2016. And needless to say, I would vote for a literal pile of human shit over him in a couple of months. So a lot of things have changed. Oh, here's a good question from Asher. Are you angry that your parents didn't give you a, a choice when you were young? Not really. You know, I think they were just doing what they thought was right. You hear a lot of people say that, like, I need to raise the kids in church uh, because they think that's the right thing to do. So no, I'm not, I'm not angry. It's like, in their mind, it's probably raise him in church or he's going to be a sinner and end up going to hell. So let's make the right choice. So I'm not, I'm not angry at them at all. How did I cope with the angry phase of deconversion? I have zero patience and tolerance for BS. I have fallen out with a few people already. Oh man, that's a good question. Blue Aquaria. Um, uh, how, how did I, how do you cope with the angry phase of deconversion? Well, luckily for me, um, when I was going through the angry phase of deconversion, I was not around a ton of church people anymore because like, like I said, our church had just split and uh, they had a new location or whatever. So it's not like people were wondering where I was at church and stuff like that. So, but there's definitely, there's definitely an angry phase that you go through <laughs> and you, you feel like that you were lied to your whole life and not intentionally anyways. It's not like they're trying to, pull one over on you or anything they actually that's what they think is true so they try to tell you that but yeah you still get angry for waste feeling like you wasted years of your life uh the best way to cope with it definitely now is online like this you know trying to find like-minded people and just vent you know when you when you're having going through some angry phases or whatever just try to find people who understand and talk to them about it and vent your frustrations. It's funny because when I first deconverted, I, I went through that angry phase, but not really for long. And then I was sort of indifferent for years. I've been an atheist for 10 years, you know, and I only started this account, this podcast, this Instagram at the end of last year. So I was indifferent for a long time, but then you know, last year I dated someone who was religious and it ended and it was basically because of religion. And so that like re-sparked that, that angry phase, I guess, for me. But I think I've, I've dealt with it in better. I'm not just like trying to lash out or anything. It's uh, I really want to use this platform to help people who are going through that, going through the, the deconversion process or already out and just kind of looking for community. So I hope that answered your question a little bit. It's it's hard to cope with because you're when you're a Christian, you're, a lot of your safety net is other Christians or by the Bible or God. And once you feel like once you really don't have that anymore, it's kind of hard to have anything to fall back on or have any have anyone to talk to. So 
resin says that I've lost many friends being an atheist. <sighs> Satanist. Um, yeah, it just kind of comes with the territory. I think, I don't know how many friends I've really lost acquaintances. Yes. But also a lot of people don't know that I am an atheist still. I've been one for a decade and I think there's still a lot of people who really don't know. I'm not very outspoken on my personal accounts about it. Although I think that's probably going to change pretty soon. I know I've been saying that for a couple of months, but I really, I've been typing out a post. I don't feel the need necessarily to come out as an atheist, I guess, but I've been working on a Facebook post about it. Like just because I feel like there's probably people out there that I'm friends with or acquaintance acquaintances with on Facebook that feel this way. Maybe they have been a Christian for a long time and they, um, just feel like they they can't express their doubts to those around them or whatever because everybody else is living in the Bible Belt where I do. I live in Tennessee, like right on the Georgia line. Is, is that a country band? Tennessee, Georgia line. Uh, there aren't that many outspoken atheists around here. So I think I feel like I might need to do make that post. And I'll probably lose some friends in the process. And I'll probably have some people preaching to me in the comments in the process, but that's all right. You know, those people aren't my good friends anyways. And if they unfriend me over something like that, then I don't need them anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know it's Florida Georgia line, but you know, maybe I'll start my own. Maybe I'll start my own uh, Tennessee Georgia line. Come out with some hits. Find one other guy with a sleeveless flannel. And, and we'll make it big.